Take your Bible, let's turn to Matthew chapter number 2. Matthew chapter number 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 16 this morning. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. And once you have found it, let's all stand one more time as we read in honor of God's Word. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 16 this morning. And um, I promise you, if you'll listen this morning, we'll get done quickly and you can go back home and have leftovers. And um, the leftover season, who like, anybody in here like the leftovers? Who likes the leftovers? How many of you are still eating leftovers? Anybody like that? There you go. And, um, and my wife, she's got the turkey pot pie. We've got um, ham leftover. We've got the, um, the dressing leftover. I think we're done with that. But we do have some good rolls left over. Those are always good with, a, with some butter on them. Amen? And um, don't look at me that way. You didn't, need, you didn't get them? I'm sorry. That's your fault. But anyway, <laughs> you fall asleep, and that's what happens. Amen? Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. If you have it, say amen. amen. Scripture says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. They said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when, he, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Notice verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. I want to take that last verse right there. And I understand that that last verse, Jesus was not a little baby at this time. He was a young child. But I want to take that last verse, and I want to speak to you on the subject, how to keep Christ in your Christmas season. How to keep Christ in your Christmas season. You say, preacher, this is not Christmas Sunday. I understand that. But I'm afraid what happens is we start the Christmas season and we wait till Christmas Sunday to start talking about Christ. And I'm afraid we live a whole season pushing Christ out. I want us this season to make this the most spiritual Christmas season we've ever had. I hope you'll listen to me as I speak to you on this subject. Father, let me help your people, please. God, we need your help. I'm asking you to take the thoughts you gave to me from thy word. <clears throat> and Lord, I'm asking you to help us to be Christians this season. I pray some people would listen 
Their lives would be changed because we've been in church. Lord, use me to help your people, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Since the beginning of Christ's birth, there has been an agenda to take Christ out of Christmas. We read the story of Herod, who was the ruler at the time, and when the, when the wise men saw the star in the east, they began to follow that star, and, and let me just kind of point out to you that these men, they knew that they had studied the scriptures. They knew that there would be a Savior born, and they were waiting for that star, that one special star to show. And when they saw the star in the east, they began to follow that star, and they came to where the young child was. And as they came, they, or they came to the city, and they came to Herod, who was the ruler at that time, and they said to him, they said, where is Christ? The thing that kind of alerted um, Herod that probably made him a little bit nervous was the king of the Jews. Herod was a normal politician. He was very selfish of his position. He was afraid somebody might take it over. And to hear that there was this child that was born that was called the king of of the Jews made him a very jealous, a, very, a man who said, I've got to take this threat out of my life because I can afford this threat to be here. And so he says, where's the child? He, he if you want to put it this way, deceptively asked where the child was. And he said, when you find out where he is, would you come back and let me know? Well, the wise men, of course, we just read the story. The wise men followed the star. And when the star stood still, they they found the child there and they gave gifts to the child. But that night before they left, an angel came to these wise men and said, go back another way. Don't go back and tell Herod because he's going to try to kill the, 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 the child, the Christ child. Well, those men went another way. And an angel came to Joseph and said, Joseph, get the child out. Take him down to Egypt because Herod is going to try to kill the little child. Well, um, Joseph, being a very godly man, obeyed the Lord, took the child to Egypt. And as we just read here in verse 16, that because Herod saw that he was mocked, get this now, he sought to kill every child that was under a certain age. Why? To get Christ killed. Herod wanted no more than to take Christ, if you want to put it this way, out of Christmas. Times have not changed since Jesus was born. There are the Herods of our day who would love to take Christ out of the Christmas season. I, I rebel. My, you, you, you folks know I rebel against celebrating Christmas before Thanksgiving. I just, I just don't. I, I was, my daughter and I were in the mall, and they still had, they had Santa Claus out before Thanksgiving. I thought, good night. This is crazy. But Christmas time is here, and we and we and people are starting to decorate. And I love the Christmas season. I was I was driving home last night from praying, and driving down Rockwell, and just a couple streets down, I saw they already had the lights out. I love Christmas lights. I like seeing the Christmas lights. And we 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 actually you're not going to believe this. Put our tree up on Thanksgiving night at our house. It's not decorated, but it's up, and you'd be proud of me on that. But we got the tree up, and uh, and we got the lights. Some of the lights working on the tree, and and we're and we're working at it, and it's truly. I, I like the Christmas season. I like the family that you can have together. I like the fudge that my wife makes. You got that? You like the? Let me try it one more time. I like the fudge that my wife makes. Did you get that right there? Anybody with me that my wife makes fudge for the whole church? That's what I thought right there. And uh, no, 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 huh? That's the first time you got excited about church, but anyway, and um, but anyway, but but I, I like I like I like the I like the Christmas cookies my mother-in-law makes, and um, I, I just I love Christmas. 
But we live in a season, honestly, where, where retailers have taken Christ out of Christmas, replaced him with Santa Claus, and the greed and the money that they make, it's not about the Christ of Christmas, it's about the money of Christmas. It's about the greed of Christmas. And you have the retailers who've become the Herods of our day. You have the Hollywood crowd that has pushed Christ right out of the Christmas season. If Christ can't make them a dollar, then they're not worried about Christ. Instead, instead they come up with their movies to try to get the mind off of Christ and we have the Hollywood crowd that has become the Herods of our day. You have the God haters of our day who are constantly trying to take Christ out of our Christmas. Listen to me you've got the, you've got the God haters who are trying to remove nativity scenes out of the public arena trying to push, trying to outlaw God and Christmas and trying to trying to become politically correct where liberal lawmakers have said now on you can't say Mary Merry Christmas. May I just say, everybody ought to say Merry Christmas. Yeah. Ought to just enjoy the Christmas season. The political correct crowd has said, well, we don't want to offend any religion, so let's just call it Xmas because, you know, we don't want to have, we don't want to, we don't want to offend a religion. Let me help you out. It's not about offending a religion. It is about honoring a Christ that came to earth to die for the sins of mankind. And I think every Christian ought to say, I want to keep Christ in our Christmas season. They say, You ought to say happy holidays. I say we ought to say Merry Christmas. I'm not against anybody having a happy holiday. But I'm much more about everybody having a Merry Christmas. Because without Christ, there is no happiness. Without Christ, there is no joy. Without Christ, there is no hope. Without Christ, there is no there is no he- eternity in heaven. Without Christ, our sins cannot be paid for. Without Christ, may I tell you, you push Christ out of society. May I just stop here? And I don't try to be. I'm not trying to be political this morning. But you push Christ out of our society. That's why you have the shootings of our day. That's why you have the madness of our day. Because people have grown up without Christ, without a fear of an eternity. You get Christ back in America. You start putting him inside the heart, people getting saved, Christ inside of the heart of an individual will change them and get them to love people instead of hating people. You have a Santa Claus Jesus, the all-inclusive Jesus that's promoted by all religions who says, well, you know, Jesus comes in different forms. No, he's the son of God. There's only one Jesus. We don't, they, they like to say, well, we all worship alike. We just worship God in a different way. No, you may worship your God in a different way, but I worship Jehovah God who is, and his son, Jesus Christ, one way, and that is here at a church with this book right here, the King James Bible, and we worship him the right way. Why? Because we're trying to keep Christ in Christmas. But may I say to you, just like Herod wanted Jesus killed, we have godless Grinches who hate Christ and are completely out to completely remove Christ from Christmas, I come to our church this day, and I say to you this next few days, these next four weeks and two days, let's keep Christ in our Christmas season. Let's make sure our Christmas season that we're not guilty like the God haters. May I say, we got to be careful that we don't unknowingly uh, 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 become a Herod of our day, that we get so wrapped up in everything else that Christ is pushed right out and then we become no better. You say, but I believe in Christ. Let me tell you something. A lot of Christians believe in Christ, but may I tell you right now, hey, sometimes our actions have to back up our words. Without Christ, there is no Christmas. You say, preacher, then how should we keep Christ in Christmas? When I was studying this sermon, I was thinking of our church. I was thinking of our dear people. I thought, what can we do as a church to keep Christ in Christmas? Let me just tell you what your pastor wrote down. One, I wrote this down. 
be faithful to every church service. Let me say that one more time. I know that's kind of hard to swallow. Let me try it one more time. You can say amen on this one. It's not bad. Be faithful to every church service. Every church service. You know, all I'm saying is this. Some of you who only come on Sunday morning, why don't you add Sunday night? Just add Sunday night. Some of you come Sunday morning, Sunday night, why don't you add Wednesday night? May I just say this, if you really want to go all out for Christmas, why don't you go Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and go soul winning one time a week? Now listen to me. I'm saying don't listen. Be careful about this idea of, 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 of well, you know, church, Wednesday night church is not important. Let me help you out. Wednesday night church is important. I'll say it one more time. Wednesday night church is important. Somewhere, I don't know where the mentality is, and let me tell you something, I'll preach, and, I'll preach this until I'm blue in the face. We ought to be in church for three services a week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Why? Because every church service is important, and I'm a, I, I rebel against this mentality. Well, you know, Wednesday night, it's just, a, it's just if I can make it. And let me tell you something, I'm tired of the mentality that, well, Wednesday night is not that important. If I miss it, God understands. God doesn't understand when Hebrews 10, 20, says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Wednesday night is, uh, is as important as Sunday morning. Your pastor studies as hard for Wednesday night as he does for Sunday morning. I study as hard for Sunday night as I do for Sunday morning. May I tell you, could you imagine if my wife made a meal? Let's say she made Thanksgiving meal. I said, honey, it's not important. I know, I know it's all red. I know it's all sitting. I don't know where it's not important. You said, Brother Dom, that's not good for a marriage. Absolutely. To have her labor and put the meal on the table and say, oh, you know, I, I think, you know, I, I'll text her and say, um, honey, I, I'm sorry, I can't make it. I had something else come up. We're applauding right now. Listen to me. Do you realize your pastor cooks a meal for you for Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night? And he puts that, he has the meal ready, and then those that he's prepared the meal for don't show up. And he wonders, is there something wrong with the ingredients of the meal? You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say this. Don't miss church. Let me ask you a question. Would you text Jesus and tell him you're missing church because you had family come in town? Would you text Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm a little tired tonight. I can't make it. Come on now. It's amazing the excuses we give to the pastor and say, well, it's just the pastor. He understands. What about God? You're not serving the pastor. You're serving Jesus Christ. You say, preacher, you're supposed to be nice on a Sunday morning. I am being nice. I'm, I'm tired of people taking Christ out of their life and thinking that it's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal. Let me tell you something. Family comes to town. They need to know you go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. When I was a boy, my mom and dad used to say, son, we, I don't care. Whenever the hinges on the door squeak, be in church. I want to find me a door that squeaks in this church. That way we can say it's squeaking. Squeaking. Don't put WD-40 on that hinge. Why? You ought to be in church. You ought to be in church. Listen to me. You ought to try it. You ought to do your best to find a job that you, can, that you don't miss church. Why? Because church is important. Church is important. You ought to do your best to say, okay, I want to do everything I can. Sunday morning, Sunday, this Christmas season, can I challenge you? Can you keep Christ in Christmas? Hey, some of you need, you, you come to church with the ride. Why don't you talk to you, whoever's bringing you to say, hey, can you help me out this Christmas season? Can you pick me up so I can be in church Sunday night and Wednesday night? Can you help me out? Can I ask you this morning, be faithful to church every service. Why, be in church. Hey, may I even go a step further and say this? I know this one's really rough. Be in church during the week of Christmas. 
Can I help you out? Here we go. Christmas is on Tuesday this year, right? Somebody help me out. Tuesday. We will have church on Wednesday. You say you're going to have church the Wednesday after Thanksgiving. Yep, let me help you out. We're also going to have Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night service on the Sunday before Christmas. You say, but, but preacher, it's Christmas. Yeah. Can you imagine me throwing a birthday party for Brother Scott? Brother Melvin, let's say I throw a birthday party for you. I say, oh, I'm not going to show up. Come on now. Hey, hey, you ought to be in church. You ought to be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night. Right now, write it down. I like some of the people I talk to. They say, I want to be in church on, on Sunday. I want to put it on my calendar right now. And I'm glad that they follow their, their, their promise to the Lord. Let me tell you something. Put it on your calendar right now. Be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Doesn't matter who comes. Doesn't matter what they say. No, i got to be in church. Why? Keep Christ in Christmas. Second, tell one person about Jesus every week. Now, this is Christmas season. Christmas season. You know what you can do? Go back on the back track rack back there, and you're going to have some gospel tracks that look like this. Get some ladies in your suitcase, I mean your purse, and keep them around. Men, put them in your front pocket and carry them around and hand them out to people and say, hey, let me tell you about, you know what, you know what Chris is all about? Oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's about Santa Claus and, and Jesus, and, and they begin to talk. Hey, will not you just tell, stop right there say, let me tell you the real story about Christmas. And give them the plan of salvation. Yesterday, I was thrilled to watch Brother Dorian Basie lead someone to Christ yesterday. I was excited about that. He's been going with me for a few weeks, and I told him, I said, you take care of this. And I just kind of walked away, started talking to some other people, and he led someone to Christ. Thrilled my soul. Hey, you can lead someone to Christ. You said, I don't know how to do it. Okay, then all you do is you read these verses on the back. Just read this to them. Tell them how you got saved. Say, if you'll do the same thing, you can get saved. It is that simple. You see, I'm saying, everybody, say, how can I keep Christ in Christmas? One, be faithful to every church service. Second, tell one person about Jesus Christ every week. Number three, give Jesus a gift. Give Jesus a gift. Say, what do you mean by that? On December 16th this year, we're going to have Christmas for Jesus Sunday. I want everybody on December the 16th. I know it's not December 25. That's okay. He doesn't mind an early gift. I want you to have a gift for Christmas. You say, what do you mean by that? I'm asking everybody to give some special gift to the church. And, and you say, what do you mean by that? I mean, listen, give, give, give a little bit. Of, whatever you spend on the most expensive gift, give that same amount to the Lord in the offering. You say, whoa. Yeah, let me help you out. The one that'll keep you from getting in debt, because if you're gonna get, if you're gonna match the most expensive debt um, gift, I promise you this: you're you're not gonna be spending as much. So, honey, you're getting five cents. <laughs> That's five more cents than you got last year. But anyway, listen. You say, "Are you serious, preacher?" I'm absolutely serious. Do you want Christ in your Christmas? Why not? Why, why do we give everybody else a gift, but we never give Christ a gift? You say, preacher, are you, trying to, are you trying to get something from us? No, I'm trying to give something to Christ. I want Christ to know, hey, this church thinks he's special. Right now, start praying. Say, okay, hey, why don't you do this? Pray this prayer. Jesus, what kind of gift can I give to you for Christmas? Come on now. You say, I'm afraid what he might say. He'll provide it. He'll provide it. And I'm telling you, give Jesus a gift. Number four, enjoy the family you have. Enjoy the family you have. Listen, well, I, one of the things I love about Christmas, you get to spend time with family. Now, may I just say this? And I, I, I want to I focus on these last two things up just real quick. Spend time with your family during the Christmas season. Get off of the digital media and spend time with each other. Listen, enjoy each other. Enjoy each other. Can I tell you this? Spend, you say, where do I spend time? In church. Bring your family to church. 
You say, but they're not church-going people. Bring your family to church. You say, but I don't know if they'll come. Ask them and bring your family to church. Hey, let's not let our attendance, I was looking at the attendance of our church last year, and in December last year, our church took a pretty good dip. I don't want that to happen this year. I want our attendance to take a step up, not a step down. You say, how do I do that? Anybody that comes to visit you, you bring them to church. Heard a preacher years ago used to say, he said, when anybody would come to my house, he said, I had a rule in our house that if they come to our house, they're going to spend the night in our house and they got to go to our church on the next day. He said, that stopped people from wanting to spend the night at our house. Now, I don't know if you want to adopt that policy or not. It just depends who's coming. But listen to me. It'd be good for you to, hey, this Christmas season, can I ask our church family, hey, you have church, you have family around this area. They don't maybe go to church. Why don't you ask them to come to church? December the 16th, ask them to come to church. Then December the 23rd is, is Sunday, right? Right before Christmas. December 23rd, come to church with me on December 23rd. Try to get family to come. Hey, those who ride the buses, why don't you get your apartment complex? Say, hey, why don't you come to church with me this Sunday? Why don't you, hey, we're going to have Christmas for Jesus, and we'll try to have a good time in church and on the buses. Why? Because I want us to celebrate Christ's birth and say, hey, we want, we want to do it big around here. we got a gift for him, and we want to have family together. Let's spend it together. May I just say this? If you don't have family, adopt someone as a family. There's people here that they spent Thanksgiving alone. They'll spend Christmas alone. You know, it wouldn't hurt you to inconvenience yourself and invite somebody over for Christmas Sunday or Christmas Day. And the pen is dropping. He said, but it's Christmas. Yeah, but I thought we're Christians. There are people that will spend Christmas all alone. Merry Christmas. And I'm not saying they have to come spend the whole day, but you could have them over for a couple hours and let them get out of that loneliness of that house and let them enjoy some fellowship with somebody. I'm not against, listen, I tell people all the time when you have someone over because some people don't know when to leave, and I totally get that. But all you have to do is say, hey, can you come to my house from this time to this time? It's just a matter of saying, okay, I want you here. Why? Because, hey, because you ought to spend time during the Christmas season. Hey, Christ started the home, so I don't have anybody. Okay, adopt somebody. Number five. I wrote this down. Don't get so wrapped up in Christmas that you miss the presence of Christmas. Not the present, the presence. Go to Luke chapter 10. Turn to Luke chapter 10. I want you to notice a story here. Luke chapter 10 and verse 40. We know the story well about Mary and Martha. Jesus had come to the home of Mary and Martha and it says in Luke chapter 10 and verse 40, but Martha was cumbered about much serving. And came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care, dost, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Martha was so busy trying to take care of everything else, she didn't even enjoy the presence of Jesus Christ in her house. She's coming to Jesus, griping to Jesus. Hey, can you get my mom inside or get my sister in here? Let her help me inside the kitchen. And Jesus answered in verse 41, and Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not 
be taken away from her. What was Mary's part? Mary's part was at the feet of Jesus sitting there at the feet of Jesus and just listening to the Savior talk and just listening to everything that he, she, he said and worshiping the Savior and said, oh, I want to glean everything I can from the Savior. May, may I just tell you, I'm all for us being busy, but may I tell you, let's not get so wrapped up in all the festivities of this Christmas season that we stop reading our Bible, we stop praying, we stop soul winning, we miss church. Christmas. The presence of Christ. You can enjoy it every day. Get inside of this book and enjoy reading the word of God every day and say, Lord, I, I just want to enjoy your presence this morning early, 4.30, when I got up and sat down on my couch and opened my Bible and I enjoyed the presence of Christ this morning in the word of God. May I tell you, you can enjoy that presence every day. Amen. Don't get so wrapped up in everything that's going on. I know we want to enjoy our Christmas season don't get so wrapped up and get so tired that you're waking up and you're too tired to you're too tired to read the Bible and you're too tired to do anything else. May I just tell you this Christmas season, hey, don't miss the very presence of Christ that's in your life if you're saved. Enjoy him. Pray to him. Talk to him. Sing songs about him unless your brother hiding right. Brother Heidenreich, the Lord would prefer you not to sing. He said, that's mean. You've not heard him sing. It's not even a noise, trust me. And if it's a noise, it's definitely not joyful. I can tell you that. Just enjoy it. Christmas season has started. Black Friday has come. People have already lost their tempers. People are fighting. Oh, Merry Christmas. Boom. Driving through the parking lot trying to find your parking spot. And, and you see one, you see this old lady dry, walking out to the car. And you get behind her and you're kind of pushing Miss Shirley along. I mean, you're, you're pushing, pushing her along. Hoping she'll get to that car quicker. You're making sure no one's going to grab that spot because you know she can't be that far from the front. And then she goes and she pulls out of her purse and has a key chain that has about a thousand keys. And she's going through each chain, each key. Is that what you do, Miss Shirley? And um, I'm sorry, but anyway, and she <laughs> was that bad. But uh, but and she finds that key and she puts it in. And you're right there and you're you say, "That's my spot. That's my spot." And all of a sudden, she finally. You're sitting there saying, "Lord, would you let her not die while she's trying to back out?" That's my spot. Finally, she backs out, and as soon as she backs out, she backs out and blocks you, and somebody else comes and takes your spot. Oh! Come on now. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, let's pray. Hey, let's not get so wrapped up. And everything else going on that we miss the whole reason why we celebrate the season. If you're here this morning, the best gift you can get is this gift. For the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The best gift that if you're not saved this morning, you can give to Christ is to accept his gift of salvation. Because the whole reason why he came was to give you a gift, the gift of eternal life. If you receive that gift, Christ will say, wow, wow, what a, what a great gift. They took my gift. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. Church won't save you. Good works won't save you. Baptism won't save you. Only Jesus Christ. 
He came to die on the cross to pay for your sins, was buried and rose again. He said, but I asked, I asked Jesus to save me every day. Let me ask you a question. Doesn't God say that we have to be born again? How many times do you get born? One time. You only have to get saved. One time. If you get born again, receive the Christ of Christmas. That's the best Christmas gift you'll ever receive. But church, this morning, in just a minute, I'm going to pray, and as soon as I'm done praying, we'll have an invitation time. I want to ask the church to come to this altar. I want you to commit to Christ that I'm going to take these five things. One, I'm going to be faithful to every church service. Two, I want to tell somebody about Jesus every week. Three, I want to give some kind of a gift to Christ. Fourth, I want to enjoy the family I have. And five, I'm not going to miss the presence because of all the festivities. I want you to commit to that this morning. Father, thank you for what we've heard.